excessive spending that had not addressed critical social and people-centered needs. The result was a depleted treasury and a nation in urgent need of help in many areas. It became our greatest challenge to stabilize the economy, and I thank Honorable Minister Dukaran for helping us in that task. At the same time that we sought to stabilize the economy, we were investing heavily in addressing needs, from broadening the social assistance programs, fixing the PICO issue, setting about 36 wage negotiations, and broadening the development of the country for the first time into areas which have been neglected for decades. And we had to do it all while protecting ourselves from the effects of a global economy that is reeling under the weight of a recession. But it is a rough road that leads to the heights of greatness. We had the courage to take bold new steps, whether it was in education, whether it was in agriculture, whether it was in crime, in health, with roads, and many other initiatives. These initiatives were strident and result-driven. Against all odds, we persevered and delivered much, always cognizant of the fact that we were elected for the very reasons which challenge us now as a government. You know, but as I see it, the government has two choices. We can pat ourselves on the back and say under the circumstances, well done. Or we can look at all we did not achieve. We can choose instead to listen to those who are not satisfied. We can measure the way forward by looking at areas where we have gone wrong or not done enough. And we can reassess approaches and strategies, improving upon everything in every way possible. We can choose to work harder, to do more, and to be urged on by the criticisms, even as we remain inspired by the congratulations. The reconfiguration of my cabinet, of course I know we'll meet with reviews from all over, and everyone will have their say one way or the other. I ask one thing of every consideration made, and that is to acknowledge what change is possible from within us all. It is there in the most iconic symbol of change there could be, an oil drum hammered out into the only musical instrument in the world developed in the last century, the steel pan. Over the next few years, Trinidad and Tobago will undergo a similar transformation, born out of the same ingenuity, creativity, and innovativeness which your people have become so famous for. I say it is time to reclaim that self-belief. Our nation enters a new phase of its development where talents and resources are harnessed from people across our boundaries. We are all in this together. It touches each of us, so we are all part of the solutions which your government now leads. In every area of the nation's development, our citizenry has a role to play and a purpose to serve. The changes which I'm about to announce in the cabinet must deliver a level of competence and performance for an impatient and expectant population. I've been very clear on what is required of a member of the new cabinet. In my discussions with these men and women who will now take us forward into another phase of our development, I reaffirmed the oath we all took in 2010 and the promise we made to our people to serve the people with humility. I urge them that and I quote my words from them. We must accept no mediocrity. Neither must we contribute it in any way. There must be no room for arrogance. We must be faithful to a leadership style that is firm but humble, passionate and impatient for great achievements, but ever conscious of the correct procedures. Those words are as relevant now as they were then. I recall them now as a renewal of a commitment to you, fellow citizens. You've taken too long, Tamla. No personal agendas. Every single appointment made by me has received the full support of those selected. Make the point. Fellow citizens, it is with great pride and honor that I announce your government's performance team. Minister of National Security, Honorable Jack Warner. Minister in the Ministry of National Security, Honorable Colin Parta. Minister of Legal Affairs, Honorable Prakash Ramadan. Attorney General, Honorable Anand Ramlogan. Minister of the People and Social Development, 
Dr. Glenn Ramadassin, Minister in the Ministry of the People and Social Development, Honorable Vanella Allen Topping, Minister of Education, Dr. Tim Bopisin, Minister of Housing, Dr. Rudal Munila, Minister of Gender, Youth and Child Development, Marlene Kudrin, Minister of Justice, Herbert Volney, Minister of Public Administration, Carolyn Stipasad Beecham, Minister of Energy, Sandra Kevin Ramnarine, Minister of Labor and Small and Micro Enterprise Development, Minister Errol McLeod, Minister of Transport, Chandrish Sharma, Minister of Sport, Anil Roberts, Minister of Planning, Senator Dr. Bo Tiwari, Minister of Public Utilities, Nizam Baksh, Minister of Tobago Development, Dr. Delmon Baker, Minister of Local Government, Dr. Suraj Rambachan, Minister in the Ministry of Local Government, Rujnad Indarsing, Minister of Works and Infrastructure, Senator Emmanuel George, Minister in the Ministry of Works and Infrastructure, Stacey Rupnarang, Minister of Arts and Multiculturalism, Dr. Lincoln Douglas, Minister of Health, Dr. Fuad Khan, Minister of State in the Office of the Prime Minister, Roger Samuel, Minister of Tertiary Education, Senator Fazal Karim, Minister of Tourism, Stephen K. Hees. Minister of Community Development, Winston Peters. Minister of Food Production, Senator Devon Maraj. Minister of State in the Ministry of Food Production, Jaira Simangal. Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Rupert Griffiths. Minister of Foreign Affairs, Winston Dukaran. Minister of Trade, Industry and Investment, Senator Vasant Barrett. Minister of the Environment and Water Resources, Ganga Singh. Minister of State in the Ministry of Environment and Water Resources, Ramona Ramdial. Minister of National Diversity and Social Integration, Krista Dikoto. Minister in the Ministry of National Diversity and Social Integration, Senator Embao Mohini. Minister of Communication, Jamal Mohammed. Deputy Speaker of the Parliament, Neela Khan. Minister of Finance and the Economy, Larry Hawaii. Fellow citizens, the leadership team assembled here is reposed with the greatest of responsibility. Having reconfigured our government, I expect now that we can continue with greater impetus and determination to fulfill our promise to deliver to our people and country to unprecedented development and progress. As we move forward, we must outdo our own performance. We must lift our own benchmarks. We must surpass our own targets. I ask respectfully, let us join together to become part of the effort to further this new beginning for a great nation as we celebrate 50 years of independence. May God continue to bless each and every one of you, and may God continue to bless the great nation that is Trinidad and Tobago. I thank you very much.